we're going to take a look at the hydrolysis of nitriles under acidic and basic conditions. So if I draw a generic nitrile there, and I treat it with some water under acidic conditions, H2SO4, let's say. Now I need to correct that because all these react, this reaction here is reversible. And that doesn't look like a very good reversible arrow, does it? H2SO4. What we can do is convert that nitrile. And I'm going to draw that, keep that carbon drawn out. I'm going to go like this. Like that. And what have I done? I've generated a amide. And you can do this reaction and isolate the amide, but you have to be very, very careful. It's all about timing. Because if you leave the amide in these acidic conditions, it will continue to react, okay? And it will continue to react into the carboxylic acid. that. All right. Generate the carboxylic acid and then you would have also NH4 plus. So you got to be just logistically like when you go to the lab, yes, you can form the amide with these conditions, but if you leave it in there long enough, it will go all the way to the carboxylic acid. Now you can take this same compound here and treat it with a lot of water, but this time under basic conditions. So add a little bit of sodium hydroxide right there, and you will generate the same thing here. You will make a amide like that. However, if you uh, continue to leave it in these acidic conditions here. Okay. If you leave it in those conditions, you will then not form the carboxylic acid, but a very similar species, you would generate the carboxylate. Okay. And then if you generate the carboxylate, you could take that and just add a little bit of acid to it and then you'd get your carboxylic acid. But to hydrolyze a nitrile, you can't, it happens really in two major steps. You go the nitrile into the amide and then the amide into the carboxylic acid. So I wanna take a look at the mechanism of the acidic uh, conditions and how that all takes place. So when you take water and put it into sulfuric acid, what happens? It generates our hydronium. So we have hydronium, we have a nitrile, and that's going to be a simple what? A simple proton transfer. And that marker's not going to last very long. So what do we get? We have a, a nitrogen atom there with uh, four bonds. And we've also generated some water from that first step right there. Now, protonating that nitrogen atom makes this carbon more electrophilic. So what we have next is a nucleophilic addition. We have a nucleophilic addition step where that lone pair on the water there can come in and attack that carbon. That's going to form a Texas carbon unless we take one of those pi electrons and stick it onto that nitrogen atom. 
So that's going to give us, let's see if we can squeeze it in here. We're still on the board, perfect. Get rid of that. Lone pair there. And we just attach to water. And that's going to be positively charged. Nice. Okay, what's the next step here? Remember, what is our ultimate goal? We want to get this into an amide first. So, it's always a good idea to have in your mind, okay, what does that look like? What are we going for right now? We are looking for that structure. So in the mechanism, I can see I need to get a oxygen on the carbon, and this nitrogen needs to get two hydrogens. And so we're getting close. We have an oxygen here, but it has two protons. We don't want two protons on that oxygen. We see a nitrogen here with two hydrogens. I only have one. I see a single bond, double bond. So the pieces are coming together, but we got to do some proton transfers because there's so many protons right there. So let's do a, another proton transfer, and that is cut off. So we'll do a proton transfer now. So we have excess amount of water present. So we can invoke water molecule here, come in, break or do a proton transfer. Nitrogen, hydrogen, and we have the alcohol there, okay? But what did we just also generate? We generated some more acid from this step right here. So let's do another proton transfer. Just lots and lots of proton transfers, really, in this mechanism. So what do we want to do? Do we want to add a hydrogen on this oxygen? No, because we're trying to get rid of them, right? So what if we want use this lone pair right there, and we can uh, do a proton transfer? Like so. So now we have H, nitrogen with four bonds, so that's going to be positively charged. And then we have our OH like that. So that would have generated water again, like so. Okay. Now we're going to do another proton transfer here. Let's see here. We have an alcohol. So I want to expand out that hydrogen like this. So we're going to use water that can act as a base. So that water is going to come in, grab that proton, and we could take those electrons between the hydrogen and the oxygen, we can bring them and put them there. Why do I want to do that? Because I want a double bonded carbon oxygen bond. But if I just leave it at those two arrows, I have formed a Texas carbon. So I have to move the pi electrons in this carbon nitrogen bond onto the nitrogen. So I need to have three arrows. And so that's going to be like this, put the lone pair there, double bonded O. I already have those two lone pairs there, so we leave that that, like that, plus our H3O, right there. So when you look at this reaction here, how many proton transfers do we have? One, two, three. And let's see, this should be what? Like that. There we go. So we just have a 
another proton transfer. So under basic conditions, we have our hydroxide here. And the carbon of a nitrile is analogous to a carbonyl carbon. It's electron poor. So we can take our, our nucleophile here and attack that electrophilic carbon. And so that would generate this species. And then we go OH. Now we have to be a negative charge now. And that, that step right there <coughs> is what? That's a nucleophilic addition. There's our nucleophilic addition. Okay. So what is our end game? What do we want to get to? We want to get to this. All right, that's what we want to have. Now this is under basic conditions, but there's still going to be water present. Okay? And that's going to be our proton source. So there's a water molecule here. And so we can then see that this nitrogen atom is very electron rich. We can use one of its lone pairs to generate or to protonate that nitrogen atom. So that, like so. But what did we regenerate there? We got some more, we got some more hydroxide floating around. Now, what was this step right here? That is simply another proton transfer. Okay. Now we're up to this point, and we see that uh, this oxygen here has no hydrogens, but at this point of the mechanism, it still does. So we see that uh, alcohols are relatively acidic. We have a, a strong base. So we can use that lone pair and do a deprotonation or put another way, another proton transfer. So we'll do another proton transfer, and that will give us something that looks like this. Oh, now that thing is negatively charged, and we just generated some water. Hmm. Okay, now what? Here, What can we do here? We got to do another proton transfer because we need this nitrogen with two hydrogens and it only has one at the moment. So what we can do here, let's see, how do I want to uh, draw this? I think it would be better to show you a resonance structure that will help you understand the reactivity of this species right here. If we draw a resonance structure, we could take a lone pair there, bring it down, and go like this. And in that resonance form, I hope you're able to see that what we now have done is the negative charge is now on that nitrogen atom like that. You see that resonance structure? And now we can invoke a proton transfer step because we have water present. So that water is going to act as our acid like that, and we're going to protonate that nitrogen atom. And when we protonate that nitrogen atom, what do we get? We see that that matches our target, and that is our, our product. So that is our amide that we want to have. Okay. And we can isolate the amide under basic conditions. But please note, and it depends on the professor that you're taking this course from, they may say, hey, 
a, or a nitrile under basic conditions goes to the carboxylate. That is true. But it's also true that if you do this reaction carefully, you can go from the nitrile to the amide and isolate that. But if you let the reaction continue to cook under the original conditions, then it will get converted into a, carbox, a carboxylate. And the same thing goes for if you take a nitrile and treat it under acidic conditions. You can stop it at the amide, but if you let it continue to react, it will go to the carboxylic acid. Okay, And to be clear, I will show you the mechanisms of how to go from the amide to the carboxylic acid in future videos.